It's halftime. In this year's two-minute, $8 million Super Bowl ad with Clint Eastwood, extolling the resiliency of America and its automobile industry caused a major stir and briefly became part of the presidential campaign. Republicans said that this was a, was a campaign commercial for President Obama, a payback. Did you anticipate that criticism? Just to rectify the record here, I paid back the loans at 19.7% interest. I don't think that I committed to do a commercial on top of that. I thought that the Republicans' reactions to this was, was unnecessary and out of place. That's very restrained from you, for you. It is. I'm on camera. <laughs> So Joe Marchione, they're speaking with Steve Croft on 60 Minutes earlier this year. That interview aired in March. General Motors, meantime, is number five on the new Fortune 500 list after posting record profits. The company has also been a political football in the presidential campaign because of its $50 billion government bailout. On Sunday, GM Chairman and CEO Dan Ackerson told Columbia Business School graduates that our nation's political system is broken. Dan Ackerson is here in Studio 57. Welcome. Good morning. I want to talk about the political system in a moment, but would GM have survived without the government bailout? I don't believe so. For one simple fact, there was no risk capital at the depths of the Great Recession that would have been put into what was viewed as a pretty risky investment at the time. So what do you think of Governor Romney's position that the bailout was wrong? Well, you know, there was a wise man named Ronald Reagan who once said that uh, there's no limit to what a man can accomplish if he's willing to share the credit or so words to that effect. And uh, when you step back and look at the bailout, uh, there were two separate presidents, President Bush and President Obama, two treasury secretaries, two administrations that saw the wisdom of uh, how important this industry was to America and its economy. We comprise between the automotive industry comprises about three to three and a half percent of the total GDP of this country. So to have essentially ceded the basic infrastructure, man, uh, manufacturing infrastructure of this country and this industry, I think would have been a very short-sighted uh, decision. So when will you be able to pay back? Well, you know, we've paid back all of our loans. We've paid back our preferred and we've uh, essentially taken the company public and the government owns about 27 percent. They're one of 50 odd thousand shareholders yeah, and when they decide... not something the government wants to do long term. No, I don't think it is. But uh, when they sell, just like any shareholder, it will be in their, at their discretion, not the company's. And General Motors today is a healthy company? I think it was properly described. We had a very good year. We, um, we're, we're a growth company again. Uh, we had $135 billion in sales in, in, 19, in 2010, and we had $150 plus billion in 2011. That's up $15 billion in one year, and we had uh, profits that exceeded uh, any year that in General Motors history, in the 103-year year history of General Motors. So, pretty good year. Uh, Charlie, Charlie brought up uh, Governor Romney earlier and, and some of the comments that he's made recently, um, specifically about, you sort of alluded to this, taking some credit. We have some, some sound we will listen to from Governor Romney. Mm -hmm. I pushed the idea of a managed bankruptcy, and finally when that was done uh, and help was given, the companies got back on their feet. So I'll, I'll take a lot of credit uh, for the fact that, uh, that this industry's come back. You touched on this a little bit. How do you feel about those comments from Governor Romney? Is, is he accurate in saying that he can take a little bit of credit? Well, like I say, uh, failure has no father, success has many. Uh, I think the really salient point is whenever there's a restructuring or a bankruptcy, there are multiple paths to a successful end. And this was a difficult decision that was made, again, by two separate administrations, two radically different points of view from a political perspective, and it worked. And jobs were saved. People could send their children to college. Uh, unemployment was reduced. Um, this is all good for America. And I don't really have the luxury of opining on such matters. The only thing that matters to me, and, and I would describe myself as a Colin Powell Republican, uh, and I think there needs to be more moderates in the, in the national dialogue. Uh, what's important that the company was saved and uh, it is and jobs uh, were saved jobs uh, our trade position uh, our in, in, uh, manufacturing infrastructure was saved this is all good and i don't know if it's all that helpful to debate who should get the credit 
I, it, I, well, I'm glad someone wants well, but the But the problem is we're facing a political race in which people are looking at judgment and, and, and what you might have done in order to make a decision about the next president. Mm -hmm. You know, and looking at what decisions have been made and what decisions might be made, you know, is a regular and appropriate interest in when you're electing a president of the United States. And you can look at what one did and what one said he would have done, and that's important. Yes? Charlie, I'm a businessman, <laughs> and uh, you and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, Kind of my view of the world is I'm here to uh, be part of the GM team, and um, I was dealt a hand, a good hand, and we're trying to do the best we can for the taxpayers of America. Speaking of America and its competitiveness, uh, you spoke at Columbia and you talked about the dysfunction in Washington. Yes. What did you mean and what can be done? Well, think about it. Every day you hear, I hear, about the debt crisis in Europe. To give you an idea, the debt to GDP for the Eurozone is 4% this year. It'll be roughly 8% in America. Last year, last summer, there were people that were willing to trip and uh, have America default. To me, we've 236 years of history in this country. We've had, we've had a civil war, we've had world wars, we've had depressions, we've, we've had the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and never did we come close to defaulting on our debt. We're not a banana republic. We're the United States of America. And I just think that our political leadership, both sides, has to find common ground to solve the issues that confront this nation. And, and right now, there just seems to be too much discussion and not enough action. And uh, if it were a business, we would be provided that luxury. And I think as a nation, our day of reckoning mm -hmm. is coming if we don't recognize that we have a systemic problem that needs to be addressed and quickly. That too ought to be part of the political debate. Dan Ackerson, thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you.